Welcome back to another episode of Svelte Snacks. Today we're going to be talking about Svelte Kit form actions. Now, form actions provide seamless integration into the Svelte endpoint system, allowing you to work with real HTML forms and progressively enhance them using Svelte actions. With form actions, your website ensures correct submission of forms and form data to the appropriate endpoints, even if the user has disabled JavaScript. Let's take a look at a quick demo of the project we're going to be working on. Okay, so here we have two forms, one to add a user data and one to fetch the data for a specific user. In both of these instances, we're using Svelkit form actions. So for instance, in this first form, we can go ahead and add a user. This uses a Svelkit form action to add this user to our database. And then down here in the second form, once again, using form actions, we can retrieve this user's data. Now, as a side note, in this specific example, we're using Vercel KV to store our data. If you're not familiar with that and you want to be, I recommend checking out the documentation or my last video on this, which I will link both in the description below. Now let's examine this code in our text editor. First, we're going to look at the HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and move into our page.svelte file. And here you'll notice that I've added a form to collect user data. It's important to note that all form elements have a name attribute with values that help us identify them. And this identification becomes particularly useful when processing user inputs on the server. We've also included a button that when clicked will submit the user's input with the post method. Svelkit forms are configured to support only post methods, so any other action cannot be used. Now, let's send the form data to our backend using Svelkit form actions. Svelkit offers a convenient way to capture user inputs from forms. To achieve this, we need to create a new file called page.server.js, and this file is going to export an asynchronous function named actions. Next, we can add a default action that adds a user to our database. So this action is triggered when the user clicks the submit button in the form, which I have disabled unless a user email has been entered. This action is asynchronous and it accepts a request parameter. We can use this request parameter to extract the data from our form by using the form data method. By utilizing the .get method, we can retrieve the user's email and construct a user object, which we then save in our database with the email as a key and the user object as a value. And again, in this example, we're saving our data using Vercel KV. Finally, after successfully saving the user to our database, we can return success equals true. In our page, we export the form prop, making the return value of our form action accessible in the page. And consequently, we can create a reactive statement that recomputes whenever the value of form changes, setting the success variable to true after successfully saving the user. And then we can display a toast to notify that the user has successfully been saved to our database. Now, if we test this in the browser, we can fill out the form, click the button. We see the toast, which lets us know that our user data has been saved. And we also notice that the form automatically clears. If we go to our Vercel dashboard, we can query our database and we'll see that this user has successfully been saved in our database. Now, if we require multiple forms on a single page, we can use named form actions instead of this default form action. So we'll go ahead and change the default action to add user. And in our page, add action equals question mark slash add user to the form element. With these modifications, we can introduce a second form that invokes the get user form action. And this operates in the same manner as the default form action. So when a user clicks the submit button on the form, the specified form action will be triggered. Returning to our page endpoint, let's create a second action that retrieves the user data from the database based on the provided email. So here we return the user data from this action, enabling us to access it via the form prop in our page. And consequently, we can establish a reactive variable user data, which takes the value of form.user. We can then display this data in our HTML. So upon testing this once again, we observed that when we enter an email into the second form, the corresponding user data is returned and displayed down here. Now, in addition to providing seamless integration of form submission without client-side JavaScript, Svelkit also allows for progressive enhancement of form interactions when JavaScript is available. This enables better user experience and increased customizable possibilities. So one way to achieve progressive enhancement is by importing and using the enhance action like this. By adding this action to the form element, Svelkit emulates browser-needed behavior while eliminating full-page reloads. When using the use and enhance action, 
Certain behaviors are applied by default, including the form property, page.form, and page.status are updated on successful or invalid responses only if the action is on the same page you are submitting it from. If the form action redirects to another page, these properties will not be updated. The form element is also reset and all data is invalidated using the invalidate all on a successful response. For a redirect response, the go to function is called to navigate to a specific location. If an error occurs, the nearest error boundary is rendered. And finally, focus is reset to the appropriate element after the form to submission. You can also customize the behavior by providing a submit function that runs just before the form submission. This function can perform tasks such as showing loading UI or handling specific response types. Alternatively, you can implement progressive enhancement without using use enhance by adding normal event listeners to the form element. If you want to know more about progressive enhancement, I will link the docs down below and feel free to read out. There's a lot of information there. Otherwise, that was it for today. I hope this was a good starting point to get started using Spellkit form actions. They really are super powerful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.